Hi, and welcome. My name is Alex Shee, Managing Consultant within the Offensive Security Team here at Netrix. Today, we're looking at a tech talk provided by one of my colleagues and lead security consultant, Anthony Maslowski. Anthony is going to give us a rundown today of some of the basic principles of application security, as well as some of the steps that we can take to better secure our applications. So without further ado, let's take a look. So really, application is split into two worlds, and I want to make sure I highlight the difference between them because that is going to come up in conversation from time to time. The first is that AppSec fits into what we would consider enterprise security. Uh, this is what we all deal with on a normal basis, where we're doing our best to defend the company that we work for and the assets and the personnel and things like that that are part of that. You could kind of consider this as the inward focus of security. Uh, when it comes to things like the CIA triangle, you may have heard of that. It's the confidentiality, uh, sorry, confidentiality, integrity, and availability uh. principles, which must be protected um, when it comes to any particular corporate structure. Um, this is, of course, keeping organization secrets safe, the data accurate and accountable, and keeping the business running. And for anybody that is trying to calculate security risks, they do some simple calculations to uh, try and determine what the consequences are going to be, how likely is it that a vulnerability is going to be exploited, and how likely is it that a particular threat actor is going to come at the particular organization. Um, so it's a complicated process, unfortunately. Um, but what this does is, in turn, we see this as enterprise security strengthening items like having employees use stronger passwords, performing vulnerability scanning on systems on networks, uh, talking about the defenses against ransomware and data theft, as well as making sure that we're up to date on our compliance and audit requirements. That's kind of the first world where AppSec fits in. The second is in the product security realm, and this is something that is still a growing space, but it's getting significantly more scrutiny over the last couple of years. And really, anytime you have a company that produces things, whether that's hard products like goods or software platforms that you sell to customers and things like that, um, you're going to see that a lot of these principles that affect enterprise security are present in product security, where, of course, confidentiality, integrity, and availability are the three strong principles that must be held to. But the target of those items is very different. Here, we're making sure that when we produce a product, that our customer's product keeps their secrets safe, that the data that they have within our product is accurate and accountable, and making sure that whenever the customer needs to access our tool, our good, whatever it is we're producing, is resilient and available. And again, the risk calculation is still there, but again, it's a different perspective. So for folks that work on the product development side of things, this is where you're going to hear things, of course, the development life cycle, dealing with customer feedback, complaints, dealing with public disclosures when you make mistakes, and upholding privacy laws and regulations, depending on the country that you know, you're selling this particular product to. So one of the things I, again, just want to highlight is that product security is a growing space, but this is something that's very common in many organizations today with the processes that they have in place. So if you look at the product development lifecycle, this is where you're working all the way from forming an idea for a product to sell to actually selling a product, producing advertising, getting feedback. And there's different phases that exist throughout that whole process to make sure that you are making a good product that the market needs uh, that can be successfully sold. So where does security fit in? And this is kind of the question that everyone's been asking for the last 15 to 20 years since security has become much more of an important topic. And really, within those same phases, security can have active roles and active steps in each one of those particular components. So when you're still working with the idea of a product that you're going to sell, perform risk assessments. Try to identify if we were to create a product like this, what is it that could pose risks to our customers, their data, their people, things like that. When you're working actually building the product, there's lots of technical things that can be done. Vulnerability scanning, code analysis, following coding standards, setting hardening baselines, things like that get really in the weeds. But of course, that's because now you're in the process of building the product. You are seeing that you need to add a feature. OK, add a security component with that. And then when you finally get to that point where you're ready to release the product, um, you've already gone through things like getting a pen test done, getting to other forms of security testing, documenting exactly how the platform or the product works. Um, that way, if anyone has questions, they can see how it works. But then dealing with things like customer complaints. What if a customer reports to you that there's a vulnerability in your product? How do you handle that? So product security involves itself into that product development lifecycle. Uh, but put security in each one of the various phases to make sure that things are handled through, uh, thoroughly. And when we talk about application security, what is it that we're really chatting about? And really, it's any kind of web application, mobile application, API, or other kind of web service 
Uh, and there's a variety of ways that we try to evaluate them. You know, what does the interface look like? Uh, who are the users? How are they supposed to be using the application? Mm -hmm. But the most important one that we've bumped into recently is what is watching your application? What is watching your service and what is it observing for? What kind of errors could it produce? But also, um, in what ways is it trying to defend itself? These are all things that we really have to focus on for any developed applications in this modern era. Because uh, in short, does the application function as expected every time or as attackers, can somebody bend the rules of your application? Can they break the rules or just rewrite them themselves? So the way that organizations have been approaching those questions and trying to break the rules and make their own rules for their own software is they follow a variety of platforms. Really, there's four that are listed here on the right-hand side. That would be SAST, DAST, IAST, and RASP. Uh, and really, for a lot of folks that work on the technical side, you might recognize the products for each of these. Um, SAS typically means that you're running your code through a scanner to find vulnerabilities at that static or binary level. For DAST, that would be dynamic scanners. A lot of folks have probably heard of Tenable Nessus. They've heard of uh, Rapid7's Nexpo's product or AppScan. You know, there's dynamic products that are involved there that scan your product for you and produce a short report or a list of findings. Uh, for things like IAST, that's kind of what Michael and I do and what our team does over on the offensive security team. We do a lot of manual hands-on testing to check not only did the scanners miss something or are there vulnerabilities that the scanners can't find that it really takes a human element to identify? Um, and that's where we stand. And finally, when it comes to RASP, that's your runtime security protection. So this is things like web app firewalls, security gateways, intrusion prevention systems. And unfortunately, I can't list specific products here because it is highly dependent on the environment that's involved. So AWS has its own protections. Azure has its own protections. Cloudflare can get involved. Companies like Akamai and Prolexa can get involved. Um, there's a whole variety of suites, but it comes down to something that's very specific for the application itself, and I just can't list anything in particular there. Now, when it comes to testing application security, uh, what is it that we do in order to follow any particular methodology? What steps do you do? Uh, and really, there's three primary sources that have been made over the years, and I'd want to say that these are the, the biggest ones. There are offshoots, but the thing I want to highlight here is that you have things like OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project, which has become almost a de facto standard. The reason I want to say almost is because the federal government, the United States federal government, did create a special publication 800-115. Um, unfortunately, that document at this point is 15 to 20 years old, so it's a little out of date, whereas OWASP is being updated on a routine basis. Um, the middle entry that you see there on the left, the OSSTMM, um, was a software security testing methodology that was more followed when uh, customers, or sorry, uh, when organizations were creating desktop software. So the testing strategy in that manual is slightly different than when you're working with web applications, mobile apps, and things like that. Um, so I want to highlight OWASP for this reason, and many folks have heard of this name. They create the top 10 vulnerability projects uh, for web, mobile, and APIs, and they've been doing that for the last, uh, I want to say, 10 to 15 years. Um, the new thing that they've recently developed over the last few years is something called the Application Security Verification Standard. So what this is, and you can see an example on the right-hand side here, is a better checklist that shows exactly what it is that a tester should look for at various phases of testing. So the example you see here, section 5.1, is all about input validation. So if you're a developer that creates a function that allows users to input data in the application to be processed, what is an attacker or what should a tester do in order to find if a component is vulnerable? And they can either follow this check step, uh, checklist step-by-step -step process, um, or they could go and do physical literal tests against the application that fit those same parameters as well. So this is, for example, uh, identifying whether or not parameter assignment attacks are possible, um, looking at the way that HTML is interacting with REST services and things like that. Um, this document is, in essence, is the new checklist of how to perform this kind of testing, and it's a pretty long document. But we wanted to make you aware that this is out there so that if you're ever curious what it is a tester is doing, if they're ever working on one of your applications, uh, you could check this and see ahead of time what they would be doing. So what are we doing? <laughs> What is it that Netrix is doing with application security? Uh, and what I want to say is that uh, we're actually moving in a fantastic direction because the organization is focusing on the shift left methodology. We are putting security earlier in a lot of these processes. Now, there's going to be some growing pains with this, and I understand that. But the important thing to note is that uh, previously, we didn't have too much in the way of a static analysis platform inside the organization. So for the last six, seven months, we've been working between my team and the Maddie organization 
in order to identify a product that would work well for the various suites that they build for their customers. Um, and likewise, the products division has also shared an interest in acquiring a tool to actually perform static analysis on code segments. Um, so this is in work. It's something that we're making sure that we can get to the organization sometime in the very near future. When it comes to dynamic, Vault scanning has had a long presence here within metrics. A lot of organizations are used to seeing tenable uh, Nessus scans and things like that within the environment. So we're also looking at expanding the tool sets that are available there to focus on application services. When it comes to IAST, that interactive application security testing item, um, that's what Michael and I's team do. We focus on manual hands-on pen tests and we do a lot of routine work for both internal customers in different divisions within the organization and externally as statement of works for our customers. When it comes to the runtime application security protection item, um, we actually have a lot of fantastic capabilities here because there's teams that deploy Azure Sentinel within our customer environments. Uh, a lot of organizations are using BTB's radar service. Uh, Microsoft Azure has its own configurations and AWS has its own configurations. As I mentioned before, there's lots of tools for each of these deployments. Um, so there's lots of ways that we can have active protections against not only our own applications, but the applications and software that we produce for our customers. And likewise, there's an unknown uh, infinite list of web application firewall vendors, gateways, and different kinds of intrusion detection and prevention systems as well. So these are all heavily active and in use within Netrix. It's just that there are certain aspects of it now that we are shifting left to try and catch uh, issues at the development layer um, before they make their way further on in that process.